In a high-security federal courtroom in Los Angeles, 13 men are now on trial charged with conspiring to commit murder, narcotics trafficking, and extortion. Prosecutors say the men are part of a ruthless organization known as the Mexican Mafia, also called La Amet, Spanish for the letter M. It may sound like a crime syndicate from south of the border, but in fact it is a California prison gang that began 40 years ago. Today, its power and influence has spread far beyond the walls of Folsom and San Quentin. For months now, the jury in Los Angeles has been watching hours of undercover law enforcement video showing Mexican Mafia members casually plotting murder. Okay, well, they will kill them, then. I'm happy we'll kill them. I said, if you're saying something bad about the Giga, La Emme was founded in the California prison system back in 1956 on the principle of self-defense. Hispanic inmates were forced to band together to protect themselves from other prison gangs like the Aryan Brotherhood and the Black Gorilla family. But within a matter of years, they went from prey to predator, seizing control of prison rackets, gambling, drug distribution, protection. And today, they still control the inmate populations at most prisons in Southern California. We could pretty much control any prison that where we existed. Much of what's known about the Mexican Mafia was first learned from this man, Mundo Mendoza, who joined La Amé back in the early 1970s while serving a prison sentence for murder at San Quentin. He eventually defected and has testified against dozens of his former Mexican Mafia associates. Now in hiding from La Amé, he agreed to talk to us in disguise. It was the cream of the crop. We were... The, the best equivalent I can give you would be like the, like the uh, Green Berets uh, in the military. We consider ourselves an elite group. We were, we were tough guys. How many people have you murdered? Personally, about a dozen. Two of the Mundo we'll talk about were part of a contract he carried out for La Amé after he left San Quentin. The victims, two rival drug dealers, were unremarkable. But the way Mundo and his partner dispatched them gives you some sense of why the Mexican Mafia is so feared. First, we executed the first one. How? We stabbed him multiple times. With? With uh, scissors. Uh, it, it was pretty sloppy that first time. We tried uh, using a bag. We put a bag over his head to try to suffocate him to death. He wouldn't die. Then they waited around for the second victim, shooting and stabbing him numerous times. Then they watched him die. And he was telling us, uh, uh, don't shoot me anymore, I'm dying. And as he said that, his voice kind of faded away, kind of like the Wicked Witch and the Wizard of Oz. It's an interesting way of putting it. It's the way I remember it. When they kill people, they make it as brutal as possible. Uh, they do that for several reasons. They want to get, the, they want to get that story out. That, hey, if you're going to die, you're going to die in a very, very dreadful way. Daryl Gates watched the rise of the Mexican Mafia during his years as chief of the Los Angeles Police Department. If you had to describe them in one word, what would it be? Deadly. Deadly. Like a rattlesnake. Why deadly? Because they can reach out and cause your death, my death, at any time. And they're not afraid to do it? Oh, they're not afraid. Badge of honor. Absolute badge of honor have somebody killed. There are only a few hundred made members of La Amé and half of them are in prison, but they're so feared that law enforcement takes extraordinary precautions whenever they move them. The LA Sheriff's Department transported some by helicopter for trial in 1995, blindfolding them to protect the security of the deputies. Down on the streets of Los Angeles, the Mexican Mafia commands the allegiance of tens of thousands of Hispanic gang members. Miami routinely enlists gang members to carry out Mexican Mafia business. LAPD Spanish. officer Rich Arsenega patrols South Central Los Angeles. They run things inside the jail and they're running things outside the jail right now. So they're pretty active outside of prison? They're very active. I, I, they're more, probably more active outside of prison because that's where they're making the money. La Amé is in the process of trying to organize and take control of the drug business run by hundreds What's of Hispanic there? street gangs. Not by importing and distributing the drugs, but by extortion, collecting taxes from the gangs for the privilege of selling drugs in their own neighborhood. What kind of a tax? Uh, just an example, you sell $100 worth of dope, you got to give the Mexican Mafia $10. I mean, it's just, that's an example. Like a kickback. Just a kickback. Why are Hispanic gang members so willing to pay taxes to and carry out the edicts of a gang that they're not members of? 
Think of it as insurance. Most of them know they're likely to end up in prison at some time in their lives. A prison likely to be controlled by the Mexican Mafia. And they want to make sure that they're on La Jame's good side. That includes keeping your mouth shut when strangers or the police ask you questions. Mm -hmm. Over 60 minutes. We're down here trying to find out uh, a little bit about the uh, Mexican Mafia. Oh, I don't know. I don't know about it. Never heard of it? Miami? Mean? Well, I heard about it, but I don't know nothing about it. You think we'll be able to find anybody down here and talk to us about it? <clears throat> no. Nope. You been to jail? Yeah. And you never had any contact with the Mexican Mafia? No. Nope. <clears throat> Or you don't want to talk about it? I don't want to talk about it. People will not admit that a Mexican Mafia even exists. Uh, everybody knows it exists, but uh, on the streets, you will get tacit denial. People will deny it left and right. Why is that? They're afraid for their lives. They're afraid uh, to become victims as other uh, people have died. And there are plenty of reasons for them to fear for their lives. This undercover police videotape shows Mexican Mafia members, including one defendant in the federal racketeering trial, discussing a murder contract on MA member Anthony Dito Moreno. His crime? He wanted to get out of La Hame. And not long after this meeting, he did. He was murdered. The hit was actually carried out by members of a local gang called Sangra, who caught up with Dito at this tiny house in El Monte, California. They not only killed Dito, they killed his sister, a friend of his sister's, and two of his sister's small children, a five-year-old girl and a six-month-old boy. Chris Kano and August Doherty were two of the paramedics on the scene that night. Obviously, these um, people used high-caliber weapons, and you know, they were just you know, randomly just shooting everybody. And when you saw the two children, I think that's when you're thinking, ooh, you know, this is really getting tough. What did you find? Uh, we found a, a mom, a five-year-old, and a six-month-old laying side by side by side um, with several wounds, both to the head, to the chest. And the baby had been shot once in the right eye. They shot a six-month-old baby in the face? Yeah. The two trigger men, Richard Valdez and Jimmy Palma, were eventually caught, tried, and on this day last December, convicted of murder, although you wouldn't know it from their reaction in these pictures. Both men were given the death penalty. They are uh, individuals who uh, have no hesitancy in killing at all. They feel no sympathy for the people they kill. They don't think you, like you and I. They don't have the mores that you and I. They belong to a different process. Prosecutor Michael.